this powerful episode, we dive deep into living a life of a warrior. The warrior lifestyle goes beyond beards, mindset, and cool guns. It's about living a life with honor, integrity, discipline, and a will to give back to our communities. Our special guest today is Byron Rogers, who's a United States Marine veteran, and this guy's also an executive protection specialist and an empowerment strategist. He's all about motivating and inspiring others to start walking in the warrior's path. Stand by. Rise up a warrior, my brothers. Welcome back to the Man of War. My name is Rafa Conde, and of course, I am your host. I am a man on a mission to change you, to transform you into a modern day warrior. Byron Rogers, welcome to the Man of War, brother. It is a pleasure to have you on. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Awesome, man. So listen, for our listeners, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Good to go. My name is Byron Rogers. Um, I run a security firm called Bravo Research Group, and I'm building a brand called Executive Protection okay. Lifestyle. It's a group on Facebook. I went to the Marine Corps. I did four years in the Corps, uh, 3-1 Lima Company, Weapons Platoon. I was an 0351 anti-tank assault man and two deployments to Iraq, uh, one combat deployment, one float. I got into private security. Um, once I got in there, started really traveling, got on one of the bigger international executive protection details. Uh, we did roughly 60 countries in the first two years. Then we repeated that cycle for about seven years. Uh, I got married and I've done the last three years or so just in the California circuit. It's where they really work in every different client demographic the private sector has to offer. Very cool. Very cool. Yes, so in, in essence, you started from, you went from the military and then you started doing some EP work, PSD work. And uh, what got you into that? Um, really, I'd have to say grace of God, right time, right place, right relationships. Uh, I had aspirations to do that. Yeah, so I've always felt like this was kind of my calling. Uh, I've always felt like it was something I was supposed to do or was going to do. So I was getting out of the Marine Corps, a little bit worried about what I was going to end up getting into, but I always felt like this is where I was going to end up. Uh, so I was rendering kind of, you know, one of my values is rendering a high quality service always. Another one is treating everyone with respect, default respectful, you know. So I'm, 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 it's the end of the night, I'm bouncing, but I'm also just busting tables, just trying to, you know, contribute. Contribution is another huge, huge one. So I'm trying to contribute, boom, doing more than I'm asked to do. Roll up on, and I have to politely ask them to leave. Um, and uh, he looks at his friend, and he's like, "You're you look the Marine Corps, right?" And I'm like, "Yes, sir." He's like, "You got a combat experience?" I'm like, "Yes, sir." He's like, um, "Go get an exposed weapons permit and a guard card, and I'll show you how to make a lot more money doing what you're doing right now." Um, I blink. I'm on a job sure, interview sure. on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, and you know the rest is history. I was 21 years old. It was like learning to drink out of a fire hose, you know, at, at 21, <laughs> <laughs> doing all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, shit. That's no doubt, man. So, I mean, you seem like you're a very humble guy. You seem like you're also a guy that's a very much of a straight shooter. I mean, I've seen your Instagram posts, you're out there, and you're basically speaking your mind, which is uh, not that common nowadays. And what I like about your style is that, you know, you're, you're, direct but you're also very humble and uh, that is a key aspect in my world in the warrior world where you know humbleness is so important right being able to accept your own faults and being able more importantly Byron to be able to go out there and say hey listen I fucked up or these are my uh, deficiencies but I'm going out there man fucking working at it as you know best that I can What's your take on overcoming challenges and kind of getting up to that next level? I'd have to say it's a it's really a multifaceted answer because you know I used to say that uh, I used to say that 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 um, consistency is the key to success, and I genuinely believe that consistency is a part of the key to success. But um, you know, as I've been in this fight of personal development, self transcendence, whatever you want to call it, over the last few years, I've really realized that consistency is great. You know what I mean? You've got to be able to evolve intelligently. 
Um, I mean, I hear my dad in my in my head, and he, he would always be like, "You've got to be smart, son." And my dad's a successful businessman in the Bahamas, you know. But the reality is, man, good people lose every day. I mean, good guys fall all the time. Life is indifferent. So, for me, when it comes to my own personal growth, my personal evolution, that self transcendence, I'm gonna put in the effort. You remember when you're in like boot camp, when you're in basic training or whatever you went to, you know, there's always that drone. You know, you ain't that smart, so you're gonna be real strong. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> you know, so I, I pushed, and I'd always push, and I always had the heart to go. You know, but especially as I've gotten older, I've you know I see some of these people, you know, that should be retired that are working, you know, working these jobs and breaks my heart. And I realize life is indifferent. You gotta be consistent, and then you've gotta be consistently learning from your experience, learning from your environment, and learning beyond just your little bit of experience in your environment. You know, seeking knowledge from people who have what you have. So I think it's a multifaceted kind of deal. It's being willing to put in the effort being willing to learn what you need to learn to become more accurate at affecting your reality. And then there's that when proper planning meets opportunity uh, aspect that can help you. But I don't even look for that, man. I look for the consistent, steady, day by day, battle by battle, step by step kind of growth. I love that because and I can really, I can almost lean on that. You know what I mean? If I hit a quantum leap, awesome. Uh, I've become infatuated with that one step at a time. I know how I did that. My, my foot is secure. Uh, learn what I need to learn. Control what I can control. Stay consistent. Stay in the fight. Now, let, let me ask you this. Going back to your childhood, I mean, your, your warrior mindset, this type of lifestyle that you've decided to live, I mean, was that something that you were taught from a young child or you just uh, kind of came up through the military and it, the military itself kind of developed, developed you into who you are today? Yeah, that's a good question. I, um, my dad's just straight up warrior mindset, dude. My dad would be the primary. I mean, I mean my dad was, is... So my dad got shot at point blank range with a shotgun, uh, buck shot and bird shot, excuse me, bird shot. Damn. Um, yeah. Right. You know, he's missing like something like, I believe it's over 60% of his, uh, intestines, but we'll just say, you know, so he gets that his his whole stomach's, you know, wide open. Still his buddy has to drag him through the jungle and, you know, this man survives this whole thing. Um, wow. and it's really just a, a, a physical testament to his mindset like he's just a hardcore Damn. warrior my best friend meets my dad my dad kicks throws a high kick at his face stops in front of his face he looks at the kid we just graduated high school right so we're you know and the kid to this day my buddy still talks to me about it but you know he stops the kick in front of his face he's like always be ready <laughs> So I would spend the summers in the Bahamas with oh, my shit. pops, yeah. and I'd spend the winters in, in, in Washington State with my mom. So, you know, I am a hybrid. I'm a black guy that can swim. Damn. Yeah, man. And then when I would go there, my dad would be like, your mom's making you soft. She's letting you get soft. And so every single day of summer, before I could do anything, I had to run 30 minutes uh, on the treadmill. I had to swim 100 laps in the pool downstairs. Uh, and I had to do 500 sit-ups before I could do anything. Dad was like, you better do this. So, you know, as, I mean, and then he has three other girls through Brazil, Beijing, Baja. So this warrior kind of right. culture is really how I was brought up with my dad. And he is also a martial artist and take me all over the place just for fun. <laughs> Toughened me up when I was little. Um, but yeah, man. And then, you know, you get into life and... Um, you know, the parents are divorced. Um, I am kind of the only black guy in Washington where I'm at going to school. So there's kind of that friction, although it was much better than the alternative where um, yeah, I go to the Bahamas. I'm the only American. So there's that friction. And in the Bahamas, wow. they're like, yo, this is American dude soft. Yeah, you know I mean, so, you know, my nickname was fat boy in a couple instances. <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> wants to fight, you know, fight them. <laughs> All right, so you basically, you had how many sisters? I got five total sisters. Damn. No no right, brothers, so. man, no backup, nothing. <laughs> Damn. 
that's <laughs> that's a tough one, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Five girls yeah. and yourself, man. That's uh, that's awesome. Hey, so. So your dad, basically, what did he do? I mean, was he in, in the military prior? My dad, he just, no, he wasn't in the military. He started uh, one of the bigger, biggest security firms in the Bahamas for years. Oh, cool. Doing tactical stuff as I was growing up and run out of the house to go deal with things. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you a story about my dad forever. So, so basically, his mindset just, you know, I guess he, he earned his mindset and he developed it through grow, growing up pretty much, right? Yeah, so my dad was alone and at a young age. Uh, he had lots of you know, He had like a total of, he had around 10 siblings. He was kind of in charge of everyone. He started taking trips over to America when he was really young doing. Hey, guys, just a quick break in the action here. Go grab yourself the free updated warrior manual at forgingawarrior.com forward slash manual. There's some good stuff there. I've updated it here recently, and I got to tell you that it really will set you on that path to start walking the warrior's path. Go check it out at forgingawarrior.com forward slash manual. Hi, helping his, his mom, my grandma, who worked in the straw market. So lots of responsibility. Growing up in the Bahamas, you're fighting all the time. Um, so he just kind of develop that same self-reliance and that same uh that same self-reliance and discipline from the demand that was placed on his life and then he carried that into his adulthood where you know he's an extremely successful businessman in the bahamas um, awesome awesome yeah and the odd thing is i haven't grown up with him too much like i grew up with him when i was young mm -hmm. ultra young mm -hmm. and then we spent time you know over the summer but then when we we're around each other you know the similarities in the, the stuff that I preach that my wife has to listen to. It's just strikingly similar. So there's a genetic. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So let me ask you this. And I mean, your mindset then in general, okay, you you the way that you started to do security work after you got out of the military. And now, you know, I see that you're big into firearms on Instagram. What is it about battle that really inspires you? Um, I see battle, I mean, maybe it's because I'm a warrior, it's superimposing your will on life by the grace of God. That's it, you know, like, that's it. That's, and so, you know, I thank God for all the times that I went through it, where, you know, I was like, sure, like, there were a few times where I was like, oh, well, this is going to be the end of me. You know, I thank God for all the cold, horrible, miserable, miserable times that I'll never forget, like, where you don't know, you don't even know that you don't know misery, you know, until you get in some of these training scenarios or you get over in country, you know, and you pray to God that, that the cold will stop. I'm thankful for all that because sure. I believe it's all been training me. Sure. It's all been inoculating me for what I believe is the real battleground, which is just simply everyday life. The thing that people don't take seriously, that's so many just to tap out and commit suicide. Um, and that'll kill you very slow, very slowly, but very effectively if you don't approach it with deliberation and don't fight for what you want in life. And so in my life, you know, the Marine Corps contributed to it. Battle and warfare has always been what we're doing here. And I think a lot of warriors slip away because they fail to see those parallels. And so they fail to tap into, you know, who they really are on deep levels. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about self-confidence. How did you gain your self-confidence, you know, from, from a young age to going through the military and then working some uh, PSD work and private executive uh, details? Um, uh, self-confidence, the way that I, the way that I, I really gained that, to be entirely honest with you, it, it started at a young age when I was kind of like, when I started to realize that no one is coming to save me. You know, I was in a number of different circumstances. <laughs> I to swim. I was scared, you know. Oh, man. Uh, you know, realizing being in that water, though, as a child and being like, yo, like, I'm going to have to fight my way through this. And, um, you know, and then as life developed, you know, my mom, we weren't well off. So kind of learning that I had to get things for myself. And, you know, if you don't ever, I, you know, I say this a lot. I wasn't the first one that said it, but. You know, you don't want to be that knight in shining armor because that means your metal hasn't been tested. For me, in my life, man, just being alone, 
crying and having no one coming to save me, realizing sure. in boot camp again, Absolutely. like, hey, bro, you know, you know, I was the guy was the fat kid at the back of the, you know, at the back of the pack, you know, uh, when we were getting through maps and when we were getting in the Marine Corps, like pushing hard to make the, I think it was like, I think it was like 11 minutes on a mile and a half run or something. And I was that kid that was back there. Like I legit had to be like, hey, homie, you better keep running. I remember thinking like, I'm going to die. And then I remember thinking like, well, guess what? You better die running. Because you need to make this time, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you better then be sure to die today, like a man, and run till you're dead, you know. Um, and so those experiences, you know, it's like David says when he's facing Goliath, he's like, "I've killed a lion, I've killed a bear." You know, I have struggle credentials. You know, like life can hit me with some trash. I'm 30 degrees, wearing 100 plus uh, pounds of gear plus ammo rockets and demolition you know not gonna be in some air condition for the next yeah. three weeks not gonna shower for the next three weeks with grown men trying to kill me and i'm 18 or 19 years old you know what i mean like yo i don't have to worry about like getting hit by an ied when i get in my car right now really 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 you know like um and so because i have the, had the luxury of those struggles i now have the luxury of a mindset that has proven like the difference between, you know, arrogance and confidence, in my opinion, is a lack of accuracy. That's why pride comes before a fall. So, like, uh, inaccurate confidence is arrogance. So, like, I know what I can do, and I trust myself, and I'm willing to fail. I'm willing to die. But at the same time, you know, someone who's arrogant, they think they know what they can do. They And that's why it's such an aggravating uh, thing to see on someone because you're seeing the lack of accuracy there and it just makes your skin crawl and make the most beautiful person ugly instantly, you know? Um, but in terms of developing confidence, I believe that comes from struggle credentials because if you don't have those credentials, you're not going to be accurate because you don't really know what you can and can't do. And, uh, and so, uh, it's not confidence then it's cockiness. Yep. I agree. You know? I agree hundred percent on that. No doubt. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, one of the main things that we talk about specifically in the development of a warrior, uh, you know, we talk about, of course, warrior mind. We also talk about self-confidence, but we really start diving into self-discipline because while, you know, we start talking about self-confidence and we start talking about the warrior's mindset, that cannot be honed until you have that discipline in place. So I want to, I want you to give me an idea of how you discipline your life, how you structure your life, mm -hmm. and you know if you are a disciplined individual or not. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Yo, and one last, if I can just touch on that confidence real quick, one last thing I noticed, sure. uh, different types of males, masculinity being under attack in today's world and society, in my opinion. I think it's like the final Lord of the Rings episode right now uh, with everything trying to destroy masculinity, in my opinion. But <laughs> <laughs> like everything, all the forces. Yeah, I'm agree. I'm a, I agree with you 100%. You know, a couple yep. more decades of this, you know, guys are going to go extinct. But anyways, one of yep, the things I, pretty much. I really want to, uh, messages I wish I could inject into the, our culture, into the public, is with regards to that confidence you were talking about, an alpha male, it's not a macho thing. Um, the true alpha males I've met, there is a gentle, meek, high quality confidence that these gentlemen have. And it's not a cockiness. And it comes from those struggle credentials. When you're strong, you're able to be gentle. You're able to be, you know, grounded, well rounded. You're not arrogant when you're actually strong, you know. Um, and so I'd say, one of the quintessential, like, and most integral qualities I've noticed of true alphas is that humble confidence uh, that you asked me about and that I hope that I am able to have and carry. No, no doubt. I mean, no, no doubt about it. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people believe that being an alpha male is a roaring person, a roaring man, you know, with his shirt being ripped off and, and, you know, carrying two machine guns right? and letting a four foot beard, uh, you know, hang out to his belly and, and has a beer in one <laughs> hand and three cigarettes on the other. Yeah. No, man. I mean, I, I agree. There is a, right. a gentleman quality right, to being an alpha male. There is, uh, an alpha male is secure. 
secure in himself. Now, uh, I will say that That's unfortunately, it. our society, you know, and, and you kind of got me going here on the masculinity and, and, and the alpha male, uh, <laughs> that our right. society in general has, you know, kind of structured their own vision of what an alpha male should be. And their vision does not match my vision. I really want to see like good male role models. I feel like our world really needs that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's unfortunate because, um, you know, as far as, you know, the clean gentleman, warrior, you know, chivalry is my, in my book is, is, is pretty, pretty much dead. Uh, women get mm -hmm. disgusted, you know, about a mm -hmm. man opening the door or, you know, paying a bill in the restaurant or, you know, it, it's just a complete yeah. inverted look at life. And it, it's a difficult, it's a difficult one to swallow. Yeah. And unfortunately, again, and I use that word is because I have kids, you know, that are going to come up to the, in this world. And, you know, I have three boys and, mm -hmm. you know, I have one little five-year-old girl. So awesome. it, it's a balance that I have to strike. But I'll tell you, even my five-year-old little girl, she's she understands, she starts understanding what a man is about, right? What the qualities of a good alpha male should have. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's important for me yeah. that parents that believe in that way of life, you know, kind of put it out there for their kids. Yeah, 100%, because the world's definitely, gonna, I mean, their opinion is extremely uh, apparent on it. And it, it just, I don't know, I think it just causes a lot of, confusion my heart breaks for a lot of these guys that i see walking around uh that don't have a solid idea of real man could should would be is you know and, and i and i and i and i quake for the messaging they're going to get as they develop and really what i see a lot of it i see it developing into toxic masculinity and then these guys kind of fit these negative stereotypes for really what happens when men don't have positive role models are not learning masculinity from a man <laughs> you know what i mean and it's we got a generation of these guys running around right, right, you know right. and I'm, there's a generation of these guys that are that, and because everyone's doing the best they can but like you know they, they're learning masculinity from a female and they're only accepting a feminine definition of masculinity and then they're same things repeated in school you know where they have most of their teachers are females and it's now i don't know how to shake a woman's hand without offending her because if i shake her hand like a man you know what side of the fence is she on or if i shake her hand like a woman you know i mean it's it's i don't know it's the game we play you know so here we are mm -hmm. yeah um, no doubt absolutely so let's dive back into discipline. I mean, how do you structure your life? So I always say, I can tell where you're going to be. I can tell you your future. In fact, I shot a video today on it on one of my Instagram live deals. I'll tell you your future if I can see your 24-hour period. Okay, fine, maybe one week. Uh, and, and it's not because I'm a wizard. You can tell your own future if you look at your 24-hour period. You look at one week, the things that you do, you know, your words are who you say you want to be. Your actions show me who you are. I... Uh, I'm big on discipline, man. I think that discipline is the only thing we have. Like, I think discipline is what makes us an individual. I think that most people, like, the way I look at it is I got out of the Marine Corps, and they gave me, like, the biggest thing I got from that is this little nest egg. It's like, you know, when you're trying to make a fire and you're out in the woods, and, like, you get that little that nest egg going. I got this yeah, little yeah. nest egg of discipline, you know? And it's up to me not to lose this thing and let this thing go out because when that goes out, it's it. That's it. I'm going to be a wandering generality. I'm going to lose my ability to be deliberate and to superimpose my will on life. Um, and so I I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger said, sleep uh, six hours. That way you have 18 hours to uh, get to work. I'm a Marine. You know, you know how his Marines are. He said if six hours wasn't enough sleep, uh, sleep faster. So... <laughs> I sleep five hours from 11 to 4 a.m. I get up. Uh, I hit the gym before everybody else is in the gym. Well, people are starting to get up earlier now. It's starting to kind of upset my flow. But anyways, I hit the gym before <laughs> most people are in the gym. By the time you see me at 9 a.m., if I'm at a normal work day, I've moved a couple thousand pounds. I've shot a video on, on uh, multiple social media platforms. Maybe I've written a blog or two. Just clear and active. It's like on a whole nother level is that morning is that is that you know 
in the a.m. hours of the day. And I like to get as much of a head start into my day before the sun comes up. To me, the sun coming up, that's lunchtime. Um, I like to get as much of a head start into my day as possible um, so that by the time I'm up with all the average people, and I say it just like that, by the time I'm up with all the average people. So once you know it strikes those kind of like normal people wake up hours, um, I submit to the rigors of the day. When I get done with work and I'm back home, you know, or when I get done with whatever the workflow is for that day, I'm back on, you know, building my business, building my brand. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a, I agree, man. I got to tell you, the mornings for me are, are are so important. I mean, typically, you know, I'm up between four and four thirty every morning, and uh, and and what I've I've done many many interviews over the last year and a half, and. Uh, Every elite level guy that I have spoken to for the majority all wake up before 5 a.m. And they all all of them wake up before, you know, the sun, uh, you know, the sun crashes through, you know, um, when I work, you know, when I'm on duty, you know, I'm, I'm up at four yeah. and I have, you know, briefing at five. So I'm up early. Also, I see the, uh, you know, the sun come out. And bottom line is that when that sun starts coming out, when seven, eight o'clock in the morning comes out, you know, like like you, man, you know, I've, I've done, you know, many things way mm-hmm. before the average person, you know, uh, gets up. And, right. you know, when I'm off, the same thing. I go out there, you know, I just shoot some videos, you know, write some blogs, whatever it might be. Just get get the blood flowing. Of course, fitness is in there. And it it's unbelievable, Byron, and I don't know if you agree with me, how much more your day, how much more productive you are in your day when you wake up early, yeah. man, and you get shit done early. Seriously. Seriously. No, it is, man. It's a whole different way of life, and it sounds so hard, but, if you, well, if you have a purpose in your life, whereas you know you have your vision, you're working towards it, and that vision is adding gravity and boundaries and goals constantly to your life, you'll really appreciate it because it'll take on a life of its own. Your productivity is going to mean so much to you if it's purposeful and it's helping you realize your dreams that waking up at 4 a.m., it's like to have that time is just, it's extremely valuable. You know, I, I, I said something the other day, discipline, and I got this from Tony Robbins, discipline will always fail you long term, but I think what should be our mission is to find a purpose, a vision, something, a goal in life, a mission, if you will, for guys getting out that are looking for something. You know, find a life that you want to create. Think about the times in your life when you've done amazing things and the discipline wasn't required. It's because you were so motivated. Yeah, I mean, that girl could ask you to go to dinner anywhere; you would have just done it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, of course, of course. And uh, you know, the the most important aspect of discipline, I, I believe, is the fact that. You know, you know that sometimes you're dragging ass. Sometimes yeah. you just don't feel like doing shit. But you know, in the other end of the spectrum, that that shit that you don't want to do is good for you. It's going to better yourself. It's going to make you stronger. So you overcome that small little challenge. You break through it and you do it anyways. And by the time you're done with it, man, you feel a thousand times better, man. Because a lot of guys ask me, hey, how the fuck do you wake up so early? And, uh, you know, you get four hours, five hours of sleep. Now, listen, you just have to train your body to do that. You do that a little bit. You do that for a week or two weeks and you push yourself by the time you know it, you'll start, you know, decreasing an hour out of your sleep, decreasing a couple of hours. Now, with that said, and this is kind of important, um, I am also a big believer that when you are sleeping, you got to get your rest. Um, yeah, there's a lot of guys that sit there and, <laughs> and don't really do shit. You know, they'll go to they'll yeah. read in bed for a couple hours. The next thing you know, they have they slept half hour. So, yeah. what's your take on true rest, man? Yo, and uh, true rest is ultra important. Something kind of on what you were saying too, man. Just now is I'm afraid. I let fear drive me. I'm afraid of the alternative, bro. Like I'm so afraid losing that warrior edge that I have in a number of different areas, there's like a fat version of me chasing me. <laughs> I gotta get out of there and get to the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, there's a stupid version of me chasing me. There's a broke version of me that's like literally every day is like, yo, let's go on Amazon right quick though. Right, you, know? Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to get away from these dudes. Like, I'm, I realized these last few months, like half of what really motivates me is I'm petrified of failing the people that depend on me, failing the people that trust me, that believe in me, 
to be the warrior they believe I am because of what I've said and commitments I've made. I'm afraid of failing them so much that I got to do this, sure. man. There's no other alternative for, for sure. me. You know what I mean? Like, sure. And, 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 am, and, and it's know? just like shooting, right? If you don't go out there in the range and start shooting, I mean, your skills yeah. are going to, they're going to die off on you, right? And the same thing, if you don't constantly right? it keep... It ain't like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. And if you don't... <laughs> right? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you don't keep that warrior edge, man, tell me, I mean, you're not going to, if you fail at keeping that warrior edge, right, you're not going to have it. I mean, it's within a few weeks, it's gone. And that is my fear also, man, getting, you know, it's being at that level where you're constantly pushing yourself. And I, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't think that I could live any other way and really feel like I'm making yep. a difference. Worthwhile. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent, man. Because once you it just there's no and that honestly, and this is something I talk about in my book, Finding Meaning After the Military, the atrophy of identity. I think this is the stuff. You go to war, you're in charge of billions and millions of dollars of equipment. It's like it's like the the, the Rambo speech at the end of the movie. You're if you look at uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have all your needs met. But the thing is, you know, you get out, you don't know how to meet these needs, and you give in to these softening agents, and then you look in the mirror, and who you know you are on the inside isn't reflected back to you in the mirror, sure. and your identity starts to break down. The atrophy of identity happens. And then because you haven't been able to – you lost that discipline, that nest egg went out, yo, course, you're drinking yourself half to death, and yep. your identity crashes. You can't outperform your identity. You die inside long before you know these guys. I think a lot of them take their lives and get into substance abuse issues and things like that. You know. So let's take a dive here. All right, let's take a dive deep. Talk to me about spirituality and the connection with a higher power. Awesome. So – that is my that's my secret sauce, man. That is my secret weapon. Um, I personally, for me, <clears throat> I feel really really blessed because it doesn't take as much faith for me because my life, the way it's gone, has made God very real to me. Um, I don't push my you can watch my youtube you can watch my social media channel all day long you won't hear me push any of my beliefs on anybody i respect everybody else's stances 100 percent. for me though you know like i'm a christian jesus christ and the holy spirit have been with me my whole life i had an experience when i was five years old where i saved my entire family's life i believe because i heard a voice that said hey go sleep in your dad's room and lock the door <clears throat> Long story short, I argue with the voice. <laughs> you know, I argue with this this voice. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm comfortable. I'm going to sleep out here on the couch. You know, okay, fine. If you're not going to let me go to sleep out here, you know, Byron's hearing voices. But hey, the reality is, I lock family in this. I lock myself and my bigger sister in this room. Um, and in the middle of the night, I wake up and some guys are trying to pick the lock to get into my dad's room. Um, and I'm just sitting there staring at this lock that's like, head head height like this the height of my head because i'm such a little kid at the time and i'm like gripped with fear uh and uh, i wake my dad up he gets a shotgun out from underneath the clip crib racks it nothing stolen we live back in the hood in the bahamas yo they'll clean your house out in eight minutes nothing stolen out of the house my dad's working for a task force they're locking guys up at the time looked like they were there to actually you know at, it was a hit on my dad and his family if i'd have been sleeping in the living room you know things would have been very different for me. So that was a young like trauma, but that put, you know, the only thing I have Damn. in life, the only thing I have in life is me and him. And that's it, you know? And I walk around, we walk around in this life because I'm concerned. Um, and I, uh, cause anything could happen. You get hit by a car, like this, the beautiful symmetry and amazingness of this reality, this rock that we're on that's going over 60,000 miles through space. Like right now, I see all that as grace. Um, but, you know, that experience happened. I had a number of experiences in Iraq, you know, where, you know, I had one where I got hit directly with 62 pounds of homemade explosives. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I was dead or not, but I was kind of in another consciousness. Um, I figure out that, hey, I'm a pile of guts on the floor. I look over at my buddy. My body's looking at my body. Uh, I, 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 I see everyone in my family, you know, 
Um, and I start praying, you know, and I just remember being upset that I didn't go ham during my life. I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't deliberate. I didn't make the most of it. I didn't know what I had, you know, I'm, I'm 19 and I'm dead now. I'm a pile of guts on the floor. Mom, dad, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I mean, I apologize to everyone in my family. Uh, I finally get to my grandma, my grandma sitting here. My grandma is, you know, I'm sitting here. And I just start praying, and I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My buddies make fun of me to this day about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm kind of back in my body. Um, I I still can't move. I keep praying. I, I start out of the seven ton um, and uh, black out, wake up 30 yards away. Like there's those three, there's three experiences. There's another one where I, you know, I'm, I'm, standing on top of two one five five anti-tank shells and this is like ultra compressed version and i see a trigger device an ied just blew up right next to the trigger device uh i wasn't in the vehicle by the grace of god literally literally it was my vehicle got blown up my sergeant's like hey rogers hop in my vehicle i'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do at the next stop i'm like okay cool so i'm like yo sergeant you know i'm not a soft dude but uh i want to get in my vehicle man this is crazy and he's like roger that we'll put you in your vehicle at this next stop uh i'm sitting in this vehicle i'm spun out my spidey senses are going crazy it was a mission called pegasus bridge it was like uh that's a, it's a long story but at the end of the day i'm sitting there like sarge yo i want to get back in my seven town i hate these hummers he's like i got you one more block I'm like long story short you know i'm standing over this initiation device i'm about to take a knee because they got snipers in this ao uh, all around us and i uh i look at my feet i see a trigger device and i'm like hey this is what blew you guys up right here you know and because it, it looked like it was and i go to kind of like push it and mess with it and i hear that voice again like hey right before i push this thing bro it was two hacks right, right. Blades that were set on top of each other with uh toilet paper keeping the hacksaw blades apart and if you, you know, step on it or compress the two hacksaw blades, they touch, you know, the wires, the wires going to the ground, two 155s had already been blown up, but they were stacking IEDs to, you know, uh, use secondaries to get the triage crew and everybody else was going in for, for the wounded. Um, and at that last second, man, I, I pick it up instead of push it. I realized that I was about to be turned into pink mist. So I've had these experiences through my life where for me, I've been guided. There have been times when I didn't know what I was going to eat, where I was going to eat. Uh, getting into executive protection, uh, I got out of the Marine Corps. I felt like God told me, "Hey, go bounce here. You're going to be. You're going to. You're going to travel the world as a bodyguard, uh, and you're going to protect people." You know, I blink. Three months later, I, I remember telling you know my girlfriend at the time. She's like, "You think you're supposed to do this as a Christian? You're going to. You're supposed to. You know." You're supposed to go. All I know how to tell you is when this happens the way I'm telling you how this is going to happen, just believe in my relationship with God. And I said that to her verbatim. And three months later, it happened exactly how I said it would happen. Those are the experiences, you know, that and just, you know, having that relationship consistently is really what contributes to my spiritual stance, the way that I, the way right. that I operate. It's strength. Good. Lots of strength for me. So give me a fucked up moment in your life, something so fucked up that you just that you just felt like, man, you were going to throw in the fucking towel, right? It got so ugly that you just said, you know, this is it. But somehow, some way, you found your way out. Dude, I ain't never been asked that in my life. Yo. Uh, <laughs> man, a bad, dark moment. Um, Let's see here. I would have to say, geez, what, uh, I'm going back there. I'm looking around. I mean, the worst. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> yeah, yeah. You know when the guys found it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's not that, like, exciting. Um, but I remember uh, one of our missions in Iraq where uh, – I just was sure that I was going to die. Like we had, um, we had just cleared a number of cities. We've been clearing for like two weeks after the initial invasion into 
No, I'm sorry. This was second deployment, not our not our invasion of the equipment. We cleared out to the farthest point, and uh, we were along the Euphrates River, and we cleared out to where we were going to set our firm base up. And uh, my sergeant's like, "Rogers, take your guys up to the top of this hill." You know, he's just one of those Marines. It just <laughs> he's just too salty, man. So he he uh, he's like, "Yo, I'm going to get my pillow," and I'm like, "Bert." Yo, we got to go to the top of this hill, man. You're going to make me look bad. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, we got to do what we're told. And he's like, I'm getting my pillow. So he goes running back to the trucks to get his backpack and his pillow. And I'm like, we're only going to be here for a few minutes, man. Like, just quit tripping. Just like, let's go. Uh, and um, he runs up, grabs his pillow. They're yelling at me, you know, get your, get Hebert, get him to the top of the hill. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> We end up on that hill for like a week, and while our battalion back cleared, <clears throat> so they're back clearing. We had no idea how long we were going to be there. I shut. I had. To, I ended up having to shut off my radio. Uh, I want to say twenty four to forty eight hours. We had a recon unit on the other side of them. Uh, they ran over an IED. I believe one of the gunnies lost his legs, and so they pulled out. And so it's just me and my squad high up top of this hill in Iraq by ourselves for about a week in the 130 degree. And we're hiding in these craters from the mortar attacks from earlier. We're staring at a seven ton where that where they blew up one, blew up one of our other vehicles earlier. And we're just hiding at the top of this hill. And we would sneak into the little market at the bottom of the hill at night to try to find and scavenge food and, you know, things to drink, but there was no water. So we had to drink Moosh Cola every all day, every single day. <laughs> and underneath the market was a chicken coop with a bunch of dead chickens that were rotting. The smell was horrible. And it was just that feeling of, and so I, there's one, I have one picture from that experience, but it was just that feeling of we're going to die. They're going to come up this hill. We're going to fight as best as we can. And it's going to be over. And I'll never forget when I saw Tonto, my platoon sergeant, finally driving back up the street. <clears throat> and I remember being like, hey, yeah. calling him on the radio. being like, you know, Tonto's silverback. Um, I couldn't think of what to say because I was so upset, man. I Jeez. was so upset. I was like, uh, I'm thirsty. And he comes back, silverback, drink your piss. <laughs> I just remember being like, like, this is how we decide. This is how we roll. I just that was a time when, uh, you know, one when for sure I was like, we're gonna die, but until we do, I gotta make sure I keep my dudes from fighting each other because of the stress of the elements on, you know, whatever during the day, yeah, full yeah, kit, yeah. nowhere to hide. You're in the desert. You're just getting baked by the sun. We gotta bury the water we do have so that it stays cool enough. And we got to die well when it happens, whenever that's going to happen. I got to keep a sense of humor. And by the grace of God, maybe we'll make it out of here, but I ain't planning on it. And I just remember just having to keep my head cool. And that, I think, is what was most stressful is being like, yo, keep your cool, keep your head cool and lead these dudes and don't let them see you know, if we have to bite the big one. That's some heavy shit right there. Tell me, what do you think a definition of a modern day warrior is? Define one. So a modern day warrior to me is an individual who is um, honestly willing to fight for their own personal greatness in order to be at the highest level of service that they can that they can be at um, in the aim of con contributing that to the world or to their family or to whatever they're tasked with. To me, I think really a modern day warrior is a person who can you know, who's consistently facing their own fears in order to step into the process of purification, transmutation, self-evolution in order to become the best person they can be and with the aim of giving that. Really anybody in any job who's got those attributes. If I look in your eyes and I see that you're bravely facing life, you're doing the best you can and you're, because this is what this is, is life now. You know, I got 22, arguably, 22 veterans committing suicide a day out here. This is war. It's warfare to me. Every single day is warfare. And every day that you're not deliberate, you lose. And so the battle to be deliberate about superimposing your will on life, 
I think that's the battle of success. And I think a modern day warrior is just a person who's willing to consistently step into that gap in order to give the, the, the destiny or the, the gift that they've been sent here to the planet to serve up to the world. And I think a warrior is that person who will fearlessly and selflessly go through that process, man. That's what I got on that. Damn, man. That's awesome. Listen, Byron, man, it's been an honor to have you on, brother. Some great stuff right there, man. You are definitely a warrior in my book, and we would love to have you on again because there's so much wisdom coming out of your mouth right now, out of that mind of yours, (laughs) spitting out fire, brother. That's so big. (laughs) Good stuff, brother. Good stuff. Hey, where can our listeners reach you, follow you? Tell me. Awesome. ByronRogers.com. That's Rogers with a D or ByronRogersMotivation.com. They both go to the same way, same place. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, and I'm real active on Instagram. I have a Twitter account also, but um, really my website, ByronRogers.com, and uh, Facebook and, and Instagram, and that's Rogers with a D, R-O-D-G-E-R-S. That's, those are my handles, man. That's where I'm contributing the most these days. Awesome, man. All right, my yeah. brother. Do me a big favor, man. Stay safe out there and in your travels. And more importantly, brother, stay up with that uh, warrior mindset across the board, man. Stay the course. Yo, hey, Rafa, it's been a genuine honor to be here with you guys. This, just this whole topic, subject matter, I'm sure you can feel it. We could wrap back and forth about this for hours, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's an honor to be here on this podcast and even just to touch the subject matter. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome, brother. Awesome, man. We'll talk soon. Stay safe. Boom. There you have it. What a great conversation with Byron. This guy knows his stuff. He's an inspirational individual, articulate man. And more importantly, man, we talked about the warrior lifestyle, right? The warrior spirit. That's what it's all about. Listen, if you didn't take anything from here, we got a big problem, okay? Because then that means you're just listening and not really absorbing what is happening. Replay the freaking episode and listen to it again if you didn't get anything out of it because there were some great gems here. Implement it, integrate it, take action today. Until next time, your life may be challenging and full of dangers, but never retreat. Your last battle may be your greatest victory. <laughs>